Hi, everybody. This is A Wee Bit of Alchemy, and I'm Rick Barrett. Tonight, we're going to look at the, uh, the element of metal. We're now into the metal season. Fall is the season of metal, and uh, we're transitioning from earth into water, and we go through the, through the, uh, through the season. So first, just a little idea what, what, uh, what that means. And uh, the, the five elements are a way of describing the different energies of the different seasons, but also how they are manifested in our, our individual bodies as well. And if you can get your energy aligned with the season, this you tend to resonate more with what's going on with nature. And then that has an effect uh, on the rest of the year. So for instance, uh, during winter time, we, that's, that's water. And it is also a um, very yin. It's the most yin part of the year. And it's a time for really shutting down and withdrawing and it moves toward formlessness, toward just uh, flowing, but without any kind of particular uh, direction. It, but it, um, uh, it's a movement toward the, the most yin part of the year. And then from there, we build on that, we get to springtime, which we think start to expand. We're going from, from the most yin to the beginnings of yang, to the gentle exploration outward. And that's where the, the buds start coming up, the trees start to, to expand, reach out. And uh, so it starts very gently as it moves from, from water and, and you start to see this, this gradual expansion. And then we move into the big young of summer. And that's where things are really big, very, uh, very large, the energy is, is out there. And then it moves into earth, which is a balance. It's neither yin nor yang or both yin and yang. And it's sort of this contained, self-contained wholeness. And then in, we move into, we move from, from that into the yin phase and we start to contract. We start to come, turn inward and there, there's a letting go, a shedding, a, a releasing and getting more and more contained then back to water again. So that's the, that's the cycle. And uh, so what we're doing is we're going from the self-contained wholeness of earth and moving toward the, the very, very yin water. And in doing so, we go through metal. And metal has certain qualities that are useful for us as uh, both in terms of martial arts, but also in terms of general health to have, a, have an awareness of, of what, the, what those are. So the, the, the energy of metal is one that is more contained. It's like you're, you're coming down and it's taking, it's creating a form, but it's, it's, um, it's a smaller form. The, the movements are shorter, more abrupt. They are finite. And uh, let me get, uh, give you something here. We get, so we have this, Metal is unidirectional. That is, it's, it's got one direction. It's boom, right? It just drops. So there's that, that sense of, of being pulled. There's, there's a relationship with earth that you're, you're moving and dropping down into that, 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 that quality. So there's a, but it's not unrestrained. It's not a formless kind of dropping where you're just falling into a, a lump. You are controlling it. So there's a form there. So whenever the, the, the motion is boom, you pick a spot, you locate that spot and you move directly to that and it stops. So you're, you're going from the potentiality to the shape and it's over. Okay. It's different than say wood 
which is expansion. So wood is, ooh, it keeps coming, right? And so that's uh, that, that, oh, that, that, that sense of, of reaching out. This is, no, no, we're, we're moving into a, um, a finite point. And uh, so there's a moving into, going from expansiveness down into a, a, a finite form. And uh, it has a lot to do with shedding, letting go of anything that you don't need. And um, we, model that in our bodies by the quality of sung. So sung is a releasing into the connective tissue system, the support of your connective tissue system. It's not releasing into a puddle, it's a releasing into a shape. So the uh, way we cultivate this is by getting our, our, our sung. And for the sung, the, it's, it's not just like I say, it's not just a formlessness, it's a you pick a shape and you move into that shape without uh, without putting the brakes on. So if you just pick, pick up your arm like this and you let it drop, right? And just notice if they, they're just letting it go like that, there's no resistance. Now just bring it down and, and bring it down just to halfway there and notice if there is any sense of like putting on the brakes but as you get close to it, that's, you want to, boom, you find that spot and there. There's no, there's no slowing down as you move into that position. It's boom, you're there. And that's the quality of metal in terms of movement. It's a very direct kind of thing. So we, it's closely aligned with your intention you have to know where you're going and how to efficiently get there and to really trust your body that it's able to move in that position. And so it's able to, to find that spot and, and stop there. So any questions so far? Any, any, uh, any thoughts on this? All good? Nora. You're, you're on mute. So would you, so with metal, would you liken it more to molten metal or metal that's already been forged? Um, not molten metal, because that would have a, that would have that formless quality to it. So it's a, it's a, it has, has a shape to it, or it's, it's good, it, there's a, um, um, you could say that it's kind of moving from the formless into the formed, but it's a, but there, there's really a shape to it. It's a, and it's a shape that, that is in direct uh, relation with one other point. So in other words, if I'm reaching my hand out in a metal way, it's, there, there's, there's an extension, but it's coming from, from here. And there's a relationship between these points. If the hand is going down like that, is between my hand and the earth. So the um, you can imagine it as a, a shape, creating shapes for the water that's to come. So you're you're actually forming vessels for the for the water energy that that follows it. That's one one poetic way of of thinking of it. But the uh, important thing here is to is to cultivate first the, um, the sung. And with that, we want to cultivate also the tensegrity of the structure. So just to review it, tensegrity is the quality of the connective tissue system that gives it that tensile strength. And it's where the, where the support is not coming from the structural members, the bones in this case, it's actually coming from the tarp that's stretched across. So the connective tissue acts like this, this a, um, uh, 
kind of stretchy fabric that that follows it like a like say a circus tent where you're pulling it in different directions in order to get a, a uh, get a form so your connective tissue system has this quality of tensegrity which is can be activated and which we, which we what we want to do with the with the with the with our our gong fu is to activate it by lengthening by reaching out extending and consciously reaching and then but simultaneously releasing into the into the supporting structure so it's not a extension a muscular an extension based on muscular contraction it's there's a quality of relaxed reaching which then creates a very powerful structure but it's also light and flexible and mobile and it's very very much what we're trying to achieve through the practice of taiji qigong and all the other internal arts that kind of suppleness that allows us to be able to roll with the punches, not just uh, uh, literally, but also figuratively. So let's, um, I want you to stand up and so, uh, take a hip width posture. So what we want to do first is to charge up the system. We want to crank up the volume in terms of our energy. And so feel the balls of your feet. Allow the weight to spread throughout the whole foot, but you're using the balls of the feet as the bullseye. That's your orientation point. And just notice, just by doing that, you immediately create an energetic connection. You're plugging into the big chi. Here we're opening up to the earth chi and allowing that to move through the, through the body. Same time you want to reach up with the crown point of your head, your niwan. And open the jade pillow gate. That spot right at the base of your skull there, where the neck meets the skull, where your atlas is, your topmost vertebra. Tuck in your chin. You feel a little stretch there in the back of your neck. Knees are unlocked. Not heavily bent, but just unlocked. You want to be sung qua, so we'll feel spiral down, turn, just release the hip joints, allow yourself to settle a little bit more. Point your index fingers. Hmm. Reach out slightly with your elbows, opening the shoulder joints. Your arms have a slightly rounded shape. You don't want to be completely collapsed. You want to, so the arms are, you can feel that there, you, whatever you have that shape, it's not, it's not much, but there is a tensegrity in that shape. There's a sung, that is you're releasing. So they have a form, but that form allows the energy to flow more freely. When you feel the, the balls of your feet, you feel the earth chi, you reach with the knee one and you feel the heaven chi, the yang chi of heaven coming down. And that grounds out through your feet the earth chi goes up to the top of your head. Feel the chi in your hands. Feel the circulation. Mm. 
bow forward slightly. Rotate your palms. And as you straighten up, you carry. But do it very slowly. So you want to feel the weight of your arms using the least amount of muscular contraction that you can. And you come up. Reach out with your elbows. Reach with your fingers. Reach with your wrists. Relax your shoulders. And just allow that energy to circulate. We're doing very little right now to generate the energy, but it's, it's happening. Now rotate your forearms, palms are down. And very slowly, arms come down, reach down with your elbows. And let your wrists and your fingers follow that. Feel the resistance of the space that you're moving through as you move through it. The space is becoming more substantial as your arms become even less substantial. Now there are two, uh, two meridians that are uh, um, that are the focus of, of metal chi, metal element. One is the large intestine meridian, and that expresses itself through the index finger. And the other is the lung meridian in the thumb. So as you rotate, Feel your thumb, feel your index finger. And you carry very slowly. Feel that, relax your, your legs, your torso. Feel that you are feeling into your index finger and your thumb on both hands. Reach out with the elbows. And bring your hands down very slowly. And stop. And just feel into that. And bring down another couple inches and stop. Each time releasing more, and bring it down a little more and stop. And a little more. Stop. And more. And stop. And a little more. All the way down. 
You just feel into your arms now. Feel your bones becoming even more dense. Even as your arms become more insubstantial, you paradoxically can feel their density. Because you're feeling into the, the metal in your bones. Bring your right hand up your center line. Reach out with your elbow. And reach straight forward with your index finger. Pick a point and stop. And down, feel the thumb and forefinger as you do that. Bring your left hand up the center line, feel the thumb and forefinger. Feel your elbow, reach out, stop. Pick that point, stop. And bring that down. And right hand. Pick a point, reach, stop. So there's a single-minded intention with this. Releasing down, but you're not just letting go. Every piece of that journey, that hand goes down, is full awareness. Left hand up. Pick a spot and reach. Left hand comes down. As we're coming down, just pick a spot and stop. And relax, release, and continue and stop. And continue. Just notice the energy in your body now. We're cultivating the metal. And by cultivating, I mean you're really familiarizing because it's there all the time. You're just familiarizing yourself as it, with yourself with it as a as a, a thing in and of itself. So like you know, picking out a violin and an orchestra. It was always there, but oh, this time I actually hear it. Both hands come up. Feel those index and finger and thumb. Elbows reach and separate, pick a spot and stop. Hands come down.
ですけど、まあ、Into the elbows、Take a spot。Another spot. Take another. Now make a Taiji fist. You know, for those of you unfamiliar, that just it's a very light fist. You can put put your index finger in there, wrap your other fingers. Fingers of your hand around it. Take the finger out and just keep that nice relaxed shape. So you got a got a hole in the middle. So here, nice relaxed. You pick a spot and reach. Find that spot. Do with the other hand. Master Chen said, "Punching was like, ah,、oh, here's your coffee. Here's your tea. Very relaxed but controlled. We're releasing all the tension, all the muscular tensions, and the arm just extends outward. It reaches outward." It has a shape, a form, but There's no muscular tension. The power comes from the tensegrity. Comes from the reaching and the the connective tissue system. Whenever we do it in this way, you your hand is not limited in in, in the speed that, that it comes out. It just comes out very very easily. We do it in slow motion to learn how to how to make that movement without any effort. But、uh, Master Chen could rattle off, you know, ten punches in a second because there's no resistance coming from his own body. Pick a spot, boom. So notice that having that intention there. Creates its own energy. So we have these poles in opposition. We have the body. We have the the fist. You can also have one hand coming back, the other hand coming out. Those are your poles in opposition. Open the hands. Feel the resistance of the space as you move through it. So there's an exchange going on between you and the space. Quantum physics. It's it said that there's enough energy in a cubic centimeter of empty space. To boil all the world's oceans, all that energy is there exists as a potentiality. Whenever we open up to the big G, we create this opportunity to exchange with the empty space. We actually. Absorbing energy in from that as we do that, and things take on a different quality whenever we do. Yeah, 
Step in. Deep breath. And disappear the chi. Release it, let it go. This is also quality of metal. We're letting go. We're not hanging on to any of these, anything there. But you may say, hey, but I still feel full of chi. I still feel, and yeah, that's because you're replacing all the stuff you've been working on with the nature chi. The familiarity that you've created with the, with the metal energy allows that energy, you kind of uh, prime the pump, allow the energy to move through you. You don't hang on to it. It's there in abundance anytime you want it. This uh, fall is the time we get cozy with our metal energy so that we have it there to draw on any time we need during the year. It feeds the other, other elements, but now it gets to come out and take it solo. Okay, grab a seat. See if there's any questions or thoughts on that. And we do. Good, 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 good. Okay. Any questions, thoughts, complaints? Scott? Just wow. That was, that was really um, wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's all the words I got right now. <laughs> Just wow. Okay. <laughs> so you can see. When we're thinking about Tai Chi Chuan as a martial art or any uh, internal art, having the ability to, to direct energy that way is a very valuable quality to have. But even more important is what it does for your health. Having that capacity to be able to let go allow the energy to move and to, particularly for those of us over 30, um, to get bone density, to get the steel bar wrapped in cotton, even at, uh, you know, there's no point where you can't restore your, your bones, no point where you can't get that, get that going again. And so it, uh, it feeds us. It gives us the, whenever the bones are denser and more resilient, then you get, uh, you get more confidence. You know, you, uh, you don't, you're not as afraid of the, the slips and falls of life. And literally and metaphorically, you have, you know, once you, if your body feels strong and supple and stable, then it has an effect on your state of mind. Your anxiety, fears, etc., kind of evaporate. And there you are, you have, you have this, this really sound fundamental base there that you can work with. Cool. Any questions? Anybody, Scott or uh, Stan? You're uh, got mute. Oh, okay. It seems like this might be a good time to uh, start introducing this into the form at this time. Yes. Uh, because it's a, we're making a movement, but there's a certain point. Uh, I know it's completely continuous, but at the moment uh, that you're going to. Uh, and get your energy out there and you're stopping. It seems like this might be very helpful, at, like I said, at this time. That's a very good point, Stan. Mm. It, uh, and that's exactly where we want to go with this. We want to be able to introduce that into, you know, into a Tai Chi form uh, at the very least, you know, but other things as well. So it, it makes for more conscious living 
<laughs> yes. Whenever you are, are able to use your intention to say, oh, that's that <laughs> point and no farther. You know, just boom, that's where I want it to be. And you're able to go to that place without, without resistance. So we start off, you know, we start off by, by just reaching out, boom, boom, like that. And, but then we speed it up. So there's, we actually, we speed it up without, without creating any internal resistance as we do that. Boom, we, we are able to quickly execute. So then the fist comes out and it's, it's there. There's boom, you're there. Whenever I, uh, remember I was first learning boxing with Master Chen, you know, I asked him, oh, should I get a heavy bag? You know, cause I'm thinking, <laughs> and, uh, he says, no, no, practice on a lampshade. <laughs> yeah, so, right. That was, the, that was the idea that, oh no, you know, you're, oh, you're, you're striking and you want to, you want to, boom, you, you're able to, to find that exact point and, and then you're, boom, 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 then you're able to, to work your, your hands and you're, you get, you know, very quickly able to control the exact point of contact. And then you are feeling the uh, the thing you're punching, the person you're punching, boom. You're feeling that and you're getting feedback with each punch and it tells you. Uh, yes. That's, that's a, you know, putting it in a martial arts context, it's been 25 years since I've done any of that, but the, uh, <laughs> uh, the, the, the lesson still sticks with me because you don't need to be smacking somebody upside the head to be able to benefit from from having that ability to control your body, ability to, to do that. So let's take that and uh, um, let's do a simple kind of ward off posture where put your right leg forward and we'll start like this. And this is a, I, I know, People do different different tai chi forms, but we're going to just go in, open up like this, and then turn. We're going to a roll back, and then come up, and then we're going to go to a a, a ward off posture. So the idea, in fact, forget the word, the forget the other part. You're just you're going to bring your hand up and bring it out. So the idea is. You start very slowly, you set your arm and you pick that spot there where you want to end up. You create that and then you dissolve and sink into your right leg. You feel, feel the, the ball of the right foot, set your right knee and then turn and just bring your arm out, your forearm and just get into that shape and do it, your body is relaxed, but you have tensegrity, you are sung. And spiral down to the left, back leg, sink in your front, feel the ball of your right foot, set your right knee and then turn and boom, there you are. You're in that shape again. Uh -huh. So uh, set the elbow and, and notice by doing that, bring that control. So it takes it out of the mushiness of, of kind of this. And it says, no, no, we're bringing metal into the form. Metal says, no, no, we're going to articulate each movement. Says, oh yes. It's clean, it's precise, it's, it has a, a direction and intention every, every step of the way. And step back, put your left foot forward and same idea here, you set the elbow and boom. Reach out, 
feel your feel the arm in a ward off posture. If you do it in your back foot, if your form is as a, a, a back weighted ward off, do it that way. They're both the same. In fact, everybody should should do it both with the front or back ward off. It doesn't matter. The pong jin, which is that up and out expansive energy is the same whether you're in your back foot or your front foot. So boom. We try not to get too dogmatic about, about which shapes we get into. We want to find the shapes that work. Sit, settle down and I'll do it in your front foot now. Boom. Get that that shape. Settle down and boom. Okay, and do it as a push. Just reach out and that's it. And then the hands come down, sink in your front leg and just reach out. Pick your spot and, and go there. Whatever your, whatever your form is, there is that opportunity to introduce metal into that. So any, if you go through a, uh, let's say I'll do a, a very simple kind of uh, one that Master Chen us, uh, you know, the, this idea here, you're, the, everything is very clean, precise. It, uh, it, it's not sloppy. Everything is intentional. So this brings the, the metal element into that. You can add other elements because metal is, is just one of the, of the five. And if I want to have Another element I can I can do this. Say I'm I'm doing earth with metal, then earth is big and round. So then I'm going to go, oh, I've got a big and round kind of form, but it's also I've got the I've got the metal quality there as well. So huh. they feed each other. The earth feeds the uh, feeds the metal. Uh -huh. Okay. Mm. Very good. Very good. So it's a, a, a decision, like when you say when you're doing a, a Taiji form, it's a, there's a decision there. Say, okay, I'm going to go through this one time. I'm just going to focus on metal energy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to feel it throughout my whole form. And then your movements will have that quality to them. They'll, have, uh, they'll be more compact directed, very intentional, and um, they, uh, they're, they're simpler. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Any thoughts, questions? Very good. Good. All right. Um, Richard. Richard. Um, <clears throat> so what I'm feeling now is that by choosing the point we're, and focusing on metal energy, we're kind of dropping to that point. Does that make any sense? Explain what you mean by dropping. Well, mm -hmm. if you, in your first example, the, the metal energy was dropped. Right. So what I'm thinking now is that by choosing the point, you're sort of dropping to that point. It, um, you could think of it as dropping, except for that could lead to confusion because metal yeah. energy can go, can go out as well as down. So, so dropping has a, uh, a dropping has a down, downward connotation. But I'm trying to think of, I'm trying to think of it energetically, as uh, think of it as a, uh, a bowstring. Yeah. Boom, right? It it returns back to to where it started. Right. You drop back, 
and it's the poles in opposition. You know, we have these two poles in opposition that creates the energy there. Right. You release the bowstring and bam. You know, right. That and it is that is that return to its its normal shape that is what drives the arrow forward. Yeah. So uh, rather than dropping, you can think of it in, in, in those terms, very abrupt, and uh, it it happens, bam. But it's relaxed. It is relaxed. Oh yes. This is, and this it's, is a bow. And it, is. It's relaxed. A bow is 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 it just it just you, you, the uh, pulling the, the bow string back creates the the energy, but it it releases into its 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 regular shape which is not relaxed in the sense of soupy. It, right. it goes back to its structure. So we're right. going, it goes, returns to the tensegrity of its structure. I'm trying to figure out how to feel because the, the powerful sensation of the drop. Yes. What I'm trying to figure out how to have that sensation in every direction. Yes. And that is... Uh, so the, the drop is, is an entry point, but it um, should not be a, a limit, right? So the- uh, Yeah, the word, the word has limitations for sure. It does, it does. it's directional. Right, and, uh, right. And so it, it identifies one specific relationship. So we want to have it so that it's there, boom. I can do it in, in whatever direction. Right. And so the quality that we want to, I think, emphasize here is the tensegrity, the sung, that so the, the bowstring is, it, even though it's still, like say a 50 pound bow, there's still 50 pounds of pressure on that string. It's, um, it's relaxed. It's, it's, it has released into its structure, <laughs> which is kind of paradoxical, right. but it, it's, uh, it, it is. It's like, oh, okay, that's what a bow does. It just hangs out there with 50 pounds of pressure on it. And just as your body, if it, if your 70 trillion cells were allowed to run amok and, and, the, and the, the ambulant bag of water that you are was allowed to just spill out in all directions, then uh, you'd have a mess. You know, it's clean up aisle seven. And uh, we want to you know, the, what makes us functional as, as living creatures is the fact that there is a bowstring there that is, that is taut. That is, you know, even if we release into that, you know, you release into that, but no further. You release, the bow releases back into its shape, but no further. And so we can stretch the bowstring, but then we're there. Yeah. When you, when you release the bowstring, yes, all of the energy goes forward to a point where the bowstring stops, yes. but its presence and its energy continues on. Yes, and and that will happen with your metal energy too. Right, when the bow goes out, the hand stops, but the energy is uh, it keeps going forward. Right, right. It, that's so very. It, it doesn't. It doesn't stop with the fist. Yeah. Good stuff. Thank you. You're welcome. It's something. I, I just got this crazy image. Did anybody see like the Terminator movies? In one of the Terminator movies, uh, one of the robots came back, and he would reconstitute himself out of like molten metal. Uh, really quickly. <laughs> uh, but it was like. You'd, you'd kind of see this molten metal reconstituting into a shape and then it would stop at that shape. And I kind of get that, you know, that's kind of, it's not, it's dropping into a shape, but it isn't dropping down. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean, Rick, right? <laughs> <laughs> so we all want to have these ambulant bags of water to have some shape to them. We 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 kind of we kind of need that in order to in order to function. So we want to uh, we want to have a little metal there 
that is a, enables us to to create this this liquid crystal matrix that uh, makes up our bodies that makes uh, that gives us form if you were to remove everything else but the connective tissue in the human body you'd still have a recognizable human body it wouldn't be very pretty but it would be recognizable as a human body that's because it's like you know it's this this matrix that uh, that gives it its form so uh, our ability to control that is what we're developing in our, our Kung Fu, our ability to control those shapes and to allow the energy to, to fill them up. So the, the shapes create the pathways that allow the energy to move. The lengthening of the connective tissue kind of gets the, gets the um, molecules excited, gets the, you know, in the classics, they say the energy should be excited and excitable. So by doing that, that's that bowstring getting pulled back. It's like, mm, you know, you got, it's ready to go. So you don't want to just have the, you don't want to be a lump. You want to have a, mm, there's a, you know, the, well, the classics say, you know, you should be like a, a tiger ready to pounce. That's the, there's that quality of excited and excitable that, um, that animates and enlivens the, the body mind. Anybody else? Okay, cool. Hi, Sandy. Glad you made it. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Um, good. So the uh, the homework is to to just feel that, feel that, and you can. You know, you want to get something to work with. That's why we started off with a little bit of standing meditation there to get the get the energy going. You don't want to be frying with an empty pan. You want to have some chi. A lot of re the reason why this stuff is invisible is we don't have so an abundance that she excited and excitable you know but it also has to be abundant so you want to get that so there's that vitality is 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 brimming over so then you can you can start to play with it you can you can do cool stuff with your with your energy What time is Rick's talk on? Thank you, Nora. What time is Rick's talk on Friday? It is uh, 3 p.m. Eastern time. Did everybody uh, get the uh, get the, the word on that? So it's, uh, yeah, it uh, should be a lot of fun. There's a, uh, Valerie. Is there gonna be a way to, because we're both working during that time? I'm not sure if there's a, a replay on that or not. Um, Okay, I'll uh, I'll ask. I'll ask. I know there. I know there's one. There's an option where you can you can access all of them for you know if you pay. But uh, as far as the free goes, I'm not sure. So I'll uh, I'll check and see if there's some way, or even if I can get a uh, a copy of the uh, you know of the interview, which would be kind of really cool. There might be a replay weekend. Yeah. So I'll, I'll find out about that. So yeah. But uh, so it's a. Uh, uh, yeah, if anybody needs a link or something like that, just uh, shoot me a shoot me a holler, and I'll uh, I'll do that. But it's yeah, three o'clock on Friday at the uh, um, uh, the what's that what's that called the Deep Flow Conference. That's what we're doing. It's called the Deep Flow Conference, and uh, should be a lot of fun. They got some great people there. Check out the uh, any chance you get. It's uh, there's uh, some really good speakers and. Uh, uh, Jeff uh, Charno is uh, a great interviewer. He's a really sweet guy and uh, terrific uh, interviewer. And uh, I'm looking forward to it myself. Great. Okay, Good to so see you. What's up? We'll have one more Wednesday class and then we're switching to Tuesday. Okay. We're having one more Wednesday class and then we're switching to Tuesday. So, uh, 
Um, cool. Great. Love you all. Love you too. Bye-bye. Take care, everybody. Tip the waiter. Tip the